Okay, so section number six. Starts off similar to number three where we have the tansa going directly to the center over here, but now I drop my elbow performing the jumsa over here. From here, the guatsa comes straight, it sweeps along, sweeping hand, comes straight out to the side. I make sure that I can clear my leg when I finish the guatsa over here. Turn my hand up, bend my elbow so it's 90 degrees, and then I lift with my back. Okay? There's two ways to perform the next section. I can either pull my hand down or I can rotate it down until I perform the third and final palm of the swimming towel, which is to my rib height. Palm, pull back. Now repeat on the other side. So to the center, drop for the jump south, go out south, make sure I can clear my own leg, rotate, bend 90 degrees, lift with my back. Rotate down, form the palm, and pull back. Okay, so again, layers, right? Two ways you can perform this time, so I can either sweep through, like I do in the third section, or I can just go straight and occupy that center immediately. Performing the jump sao, uh, I always like to perform it to the center first because it develops all the attributes, but then in, in application, the elbow is more relaxed, it's on the nipple line. Okay, so uh, like, uh, like the places that you use this, like for instance, I'll show you here in the Danchi, when you give me the palm, I can jump out here. It's not with the hand, it's really the elbow and uh, my, my body power as opposed to trying to karate chop him down. Not only is this not very strong, he's still going to be able to palm through. I jump straight down over here, so if you want to hit, uh, jump straight down over here. So if you want to hit me, he has to have some funny angles or whatever. So um, you've got to make sure that we do the jump out. You don't need with the hand, it's the elbow that does the job for sinking, sinking elbow. Okay, shift from a different angle over here, sink the elbow. Use my body as well. All right. Next is the guat sao, the sweeping hand. The guat lao and this palm over here, the third palm, okay? So uh, the traditional application, even though I love this, right? If he decides to give me more of a body kick as opposed to a leg one over here, right? I now perform the guat side to pick up his leg, making sure that I don't uh, try and stop his shin, but I'm going further up underneath his hamstring. And I'll lift my body over here to throw him backwards, okay? So he does it all at once. So I'll do it, I'll do it incorrectly, is where I try and stop his leg with my, his, his leg at the shin, which is bad. I've got to use footwork, the zigzag footwork, okay? It's just here. And then I'm able to perform the guat lao with the throw. Okay, and the, the palm to the body delivered with the loading of the spine. Here, so in the form, load, release. It can be a chain, so it's more of an edged strike or it's uh, more commonly known as a, or referred to as a palm right here. So I'm using the same uh, striking surface as I did with the other two palms. Rotate back. So a nice application of this is if someone does like an outward block or a crying block and I punch through, I can just rotate down and change, uh, change direction over here and hit to the body. So maybe he blocks and punches me. Yeah, it's more of a realistic application over here. Let's do it to the other side so that you can see it. It's a nice way, nice application for this particular section. 